Hello friends. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to wherever on globe all of you are. My warm greetings to all of you. Just let me know if you are able to hear me all. Participants, are you able to hear me? So, as you all know, we are all here to have a learning and a quick discussion and uh, basically a discussion about the supply chain management, some of its key aspects, attributes, importances, and uh, the features of supply chain management and how exactly it linked to the way we business and to the way we manage our professional lives. So, before starting, let me give a brief myself. I will be the instructor for this course, which will be based on supply chain management. I am a mechanical engineer by profession and have also done an MBA from a leading B school of India. The school is top three of India and it expertises in operational management. I have an experience of um, more than 14 years and uh, my core competence is operational management, the process improvements, Six Sigma, environmental technology, the greens and supply chain uh, developments, the way quality improvement initiatives like the SMED, uh, Six Sigma processes, the, the POC, process of ongoing improvements like food I have a core competence and over my journey through the operational excellence, I have had good fortune of working on few of the important life projects which have become a good management philosophy in the field of six and process improvements. I have had the opportunity to interact and improve on these supply chains and uh, the process improvements and able to impact the bottom line of my organization by about 2.2 crores, which is about 22 million Indian rupees. I am also a visiting faculty to the B school from which I graduated and uh, I take up subjects on supply chain management and process improvement. Presently, I'm working on improvement of the process and improvement which will have some good new technologies coming our way. So that's in brief about myself. Before going into the webinar today, there are a few things that uh, I would like to discuss with all of you. There will be few things like since the webinar is uh, only of about 60 minutes, which is a small duration of time to understand uh, supply chain management. What I will do is I'll try to discuss the depth and the various uh, aspects of supply chain management for about 40 to 50 minutes. And then I'll leave the floor open for all of you to raise questions to me. Over the duration of 50 minutes, you will come across various concepts and you will also come across various uh, issues and confusions. So my only request to all of you will be to write down all the concepts, issues and uh, problems that you may come across during this webinar and shoot those questions to me. I assure you that none of the questions that you raise will go unanswered. If I don't attend to your question this webinar, I will make it a point to write you a personal way with the solution that I have. So kindly participate very proactively in this session and uh, I am very sure that you will end up learning something good about supply chain management. No question is a good question or a bad question. A question is a question. Another request and a requirement actually from my side, from all of you, is that I request complete 
attention of all of you participating in this webinar. I would request all of you to at least listen to whatever is being discussed in this webinar. Even if you don't go through the slides and the presentation which has been shared, that is fair enough. But you should listen and give a thought about the concepts which I am going to discuss in this webinar. This session though is very brief and we will only be touching the tip of the iceberg but uh, there should not be any issues or questions left unanswered. Just pay attention to these 40-45 minutes and you will realize that you have gained a good amount in supply chain management process. This is my request to all of you. So on this premise let's start. The agenda for this webinar will be, I'll try to discuss as to what exactly is a supply chain management process, try to have a small discussion about how it has grown and how the history of supply chain management is going to show us the way to the future of supply chain management. I would also discuss about the merits of learning supply chain management will let you know what are the important macro structures on which supply chain management is based on. <clears throat> I'll also like to discuss a brief about the improvement processes and how are improvement processes related to supply chain management. We'll uh, commence the webinar with uh, discussion on the Edureka platform and uh, what is the importance of getting online education or virtual education. So on this premise, let's start. Before we start, I would like to ask you all a very basic question. And the question is just before your screen. This question is something that uh, is generally faced by the interviewees or posed by the interviewers, a very common question. And you will be actually surprised as to why am I asking you a question? Why, why am I starting a webinar with a question which is seemingly, seemingly unrelated to the subject? Believe me, it has a very, very important relation to the subject at hand. Just think, what do you want to be five years from now? Where do you exactly see yourself five years from now? Think. Just think for maybe 30 seconds or maybe one minute. Have a thinking as to where exactly do you see yourself five years from now, three years from now. Do you see yourself doing the same job? Do you see yourself being a doctor, an engineer, a software expert, a business tycoon, an entrepreneur? How do you see yourself? Certainly, you don't see yourself as a professional in the status that you are in the current level. At least this is what most of us uh, think of. In future, five years from now, we'll grow professionally and we'll also mature. So when we grow professionally, so what is the thing that makes us good? What is the thing that can enable our growth. If there is a doctor or an engineer or, a, or ex, take an example of an IT software expert, a software professional aspires to become a good software professional after five years. This is a general thinking and a general trend that I am talking about. But just think just pause for a minute and think about this thing. Is being good, good enough? Is knowing your subject matter and generating experiences through your journey of professional path, is this good enough? Is that your technical competence and the journey 
experience that you have garnered over the, your journey good enough to take you to the position that you aspire to be at after five years? The answer is N-O, no. It is not going to take you to the position or the professional aspiration that you think for yourself. Why is that? You may think I am good, I am technically sound, but what is it that is stopping me? Let me substantiate this point with, a, with the help of an example. Everybody goes to a doctor. Now, suppose there is a renowned doctor in your locality. He is very good. He is a renowned surgeon rather. And there is a patient who goes to this doctor for an ailment in his leg or foot. Now this element is simple and this requires the surgeon to perform a basic surgery on that patient. The patient goes to the operation theater, the doctor starts with the process of surgery. He is an expert at it, he has got a good technical knowledge. The doctor starts with the surgery and then he realizes that the incision blade that he is supposed to use is not there. Furthermore he realizes that, oh God, the cotton that I'm supposed to use is not there. The medicines, they are not there or they are not in the proper quantity. What will be the result of that operation? Poor. Poor result. The patient may have to postpone the entire procedure for another day. So, think again. The doctor was good, his experience was excellent, but he, still he failed. But why did the doctor fail? Think again. What is the thing that failed the doctor? Did the doctor fail because of his inherent lackness or slackness? No. He did not fail on account of that. He failed because he failed to understand the importance of interdependencies of various other acts, actions and materials onto himself. He did not realize that he required particular set of resources, particular set of services, particular set of informations, particular set of material flow for that operation to become successful. He failed on that count. As a result of which, what happened? He was termed as a failure. The entire thing was a dud. And thus, this simple example, and yet a very effective example, goes on to underline the importance of supply chain management. Had the doctor understood the importance of interdependencies between the various resources inherent or available in the process that he is going to conduct, he would never have failed. This is the same situation with most of us in the professional life. We are surrounded by resources at all corners. We know the importance of various resources, but we don't know the importance of all the resources. A seemingly trivial resource may appear to be very, very important resource at the end, but we don't have an idea of. We don't know how the resources are interlinked and interdependent on the process that we are looking at. As a result of which, we face problems in the processes that we handle. Problems like poor delivery, poor manufacturing of the material, very poor customer uh, delight, high volume of customer complaints, non-compliance. All these things are the basic attributes of a process manufacturing or 
an IT process or a service process. These are integral weaknesses or the evils of any process. It, all of these are there. But why are they there? They are there because we as professionals do not have a complete visibility and a complete understanding of how the resources are related, linked to each other, how are they networked to each other. If we understand the various interdependencies, dependencies and the networking of the various resources, we will be able to exploit all the resources in the optimal way and then there will be no chance that we will receive complaints for the, from the customers who are our ultimate goal. Keeping the customer happy, the customer delight is our ultimate goal and this is what we should strive for. So this is what supply chain is all about. All of us perform supply chain knowingly or unknowingly. There is no professional in this world who is in a silo which is devoid of a supply chain. Macro or micro, you are a part of a supply chain. So when you are a part of a supply chain, then you are left with no other option but to know it as simple as that. So this is how understanding and knowing and developing a better understanding and knowledge of supply chain is pertinent to any professional in this world. A seemingly unrelated professional like a doctor is even affected by a supply chain. So when we are in a sea of supply chain and the concepts and the flows, we are left with no other option but to learn this concept in full and learn this concept in all correctness. And that is why if you could now reflect on the example and the case and the question that I posed, you will now find a coherence as into a purpose of the question as well as its relation to the supply chain. We cannot escape the supply chain merits or demerits. So it is better always to have a good understanding of supply chain and to have a holistic and exhaustive understanding of what exactly is the supply chain and how does it impact your process. If you become an excellent process expert or in short an expert who has a good understanding of how the various flows, the flows like information, the flows like finances, financial flows like cash, the flows of material in a process etc. If you are in complete command and in complete knowledge of informations and the flows and the processes inherent in a system, you become a process expert or in short a supply chain expert. So this brings us to our second question as to what exactly is a supply chain? What do we mean by supply chain management? Simply put, a supply chain management is any we are discussing about the supply chain processes and how exactly is a supply chain defined. You will see that the experts say that any process, any of the things which are such that they are oriented towards the benefit of the customer and which makes a customer delightful is a supply chain process. There are various elements in a process. If you will think there are elements like uh, the raw material suppliers, the process itself, the stores, the warehouses and the end customers. These are the five important elements of a process from end to end. Now the way we handle and establish a harmony between all these processes is how we develop a optimized supply chain solution. When we get into the nuances of a supply chain process, you'll see that any of the things like if I take an example of a raw material supplier, 
it will have various micro aspects like uh, the logistics at the supplier end, the quality of the raw material, the flow of the raw material in its supplier unit. When we look at the processes, there, it will have various uh, structures or various elements like operation, distribution, finance, etc. So all these things, the micro study of it and establishing a optimal and a well measured sequence and a sync between the various things within a process is the main responsibility of a supply chain management system. As a professional, what are you supposed to do? As a professional, what you're supposed to do is to have a good understanding of how the various resources, how the various elements of supply chain are interdependent on each other. How their interdependencies could be exploited to optimize and maximize my overall profit. As a professional, this is your key responsibility. As I've already mentioned before, as a professional, you cannot take yourself out from any supply chain process. You will always be a part of a supply chain process. There is no professional who works in silo outside any supply chain process. So having a good information and knowledge of supply chain its various resources, interdependencies, etc. is not an option. You will have to do it. And that is why you have to learn all the nuances and the nitty gritties of a supply chain management process. That is why understanding the supply chain, its various aspects, the elements that impact it, etc. are very, very important. We are part of a supply chain process and hence we cannot take ourselves out from the learning of supply chain management. We have to have an understanding of the supply chain process we are part of and how we are going to impact it positively. And that is why we are here to understand the nitty gritties of supply chain management process. This is a diagram of a typical supply chain process. This is how a supply chain process looks like. There will be a supplier, he supplies the product, the, <clears throat> well, see, if you see on my arrow, the product is procured, sent to the supplier, then it, the supplier orders it from the uh, retailer, uh, I mean the main procurer, the buyers get it from the supplier, the buyer is the process owner and it then <clears throat> gives it to the end customer who is being called as a final supplier to the next line. See the second diagram. The raw material suppliers, manufacturers, the retailers and the end customers. These are the four elements of how a supply chain management system is. These are the four elements of which supply chain management system consists of. Now what are the various flows in it? As we have already discussed, the various flows in a supply chain management system are the information which flows across all the units, across all the resources, across all the action points, across all the processes. The material flow, material flows from the supplier to the end customers. The cash flow, the how the volume of money is flowing from one area to the another. It is the supply chain decision to optimize the flow of money or rather to reduce the total flow of money from the entire supply chain process. Now, at this point, let us take an example of how a supply chain, a traditional supply chain, which was changed into a new kind of a supply chain model, impacted the total output of a company. I'll take an example of an Indian e-commerce company, the name of Flipkart.com. It is a very popular e-commerce brand in India and in Southeast Asia as well. Basically it does its business in India itself. Now, when you see Flipkart, you will recall that uh, about an year ago, in the same month of October, 
Flipkart came up with a one billion sale. It was a massive campaign from Flipkart. By this campaign, Flipkart aspired to get at least a billion dollars in sale from a single day. There were lots and lots of offers. There were various things. Flipkart with its all infrastructure was ready for this sale. But tell me, everybody, was this sale or was this supply chain strategy a success for Flipkart? What do you think? Was it a success for Flipkart or uh, was it a dud? From financial point of view, this strategy by Flipkart was an below average performance strategy. Few said that it was a failure. So just think, why did it fail? Flipkart had all the infrastructure in its place. Flipkart had all the goods which it had offered. It was there in the, on the on sale. It had the support, backing support also. But why did it fail? What was wrong with the supply chain of Flipkart? Flipkart was following the generic e-commerce e supply chain. So why did it fail? It failed because Flipkart failed to understand the importance of the infrastructure which was its main asset or its main resource. When the orders, when the huge volume of customer uh, information flow started getting in, its server simply crashed. And as a result of this, even if the customer were for, forcing in and feeding in orders, just because the crashed, the entire supply chain got haywire. The entire information flow that we are now talking about, it complete completely got disarrayed. There was no process which was flowing in an structured way on that particular day. As a result of which, the entire supply chain of Flipkart crashed. And it crashed because the supply chain on which Flipkart was based was not equipped to handle the kind of material flow, information flow, and the cash flow that it was witnessing. Failure is an aspect. Of, but see how beautifully Flipkart bounced back. And this is now going to tell you the importance of supply chain management, the importance of knowledge of supply chain management in a process. Just a year ago, Flipkart faced its biggest de debacle. The 1 billion sale did not reach its target, and it was a complete failure. Like any another e-commerce company, Flipkart did not lay down its arms. Flipkart remodified its supply chain and came out with a very unique supply chain strategy. Do you know? What kind of an strategy did Flipkart implement? It was a very, very simple strategy. And the purpose why I'm discussing all these strategies with you is because you as professionals who are a part of supply chain management system have an ability to think of simple yet effective supply chain improvement strategies. And that is why I'm discussing all these success stories and the failure stories with all of you. The solution to Flipkart's success story was given by a rookie professional from Flipkart itself. And it became a success story from one million company in 2013, 2013. 
Flipkart is now a multi-billion dollar company. So what is the difference? What difference did Flipkart do? What is the different strategy did it come up with? If you observe the regular transactions or the supply chain model of Flipkart, you see that Flipkart never comes up with a big volume sale kind of an offer. Flipkart has learned its lesson and now Flipkart releases various sale offers in bits and pieces. For example, if I see a sale on electronic goods, then after maybe 10 days, I'll get to see a sale on maybe digital ebooks or a sale on books or a sale on mobiles. So Flipkart has actually compartmentalized its entire sales strategy. It sells some goods at one time, it sells uh, some another good at one other time, and so on and so forth. Now think, what is the benefit that it is going, that it is giving to all of us? What is the benefit that it is uh, going to give to Flipkart? We as customers are getting a benefit that we are getting a better discount. A better, though the product is limited, if I am uh, looking for an uh, electronics good, I will only be getting electronics good deal when the uh, electronic good sale is there. But then I am getting a good discount and a deal on it. On the other side, let's see what is the benefit that it is giving to Flipkart apart from the huge monetary benefits that it has given. Its load on the infrastructures are totally marginalized. It has aligned all its resources to its constraint resource. And what is that constraint resource? The information flow. It has aligned all its resources, the resources like warehouses, the resources like customer feedbacks, the resources like customer inputs, resources like the materials itself, suppliers. All these things are now oriented towards the basic information about particular goods only. So Flipkart has now migrated from a diversified and yet a big supply chain model to a conversed and focused small supply chain model. And just see, by a simple application of common sense and a common logic, Flipkart is doing wonders. And that is why I am propping all of you to just think. Think from supply chain point of view. What are the things that are impacting your supply chain? How are you going to change it? All the solutions are very simple. Just try to think of a simple solutions only. Simple solutions are simple but effective. Let me take you through a brief history of supply chain management. Now this is a very, very powerful slide. And I would like all of you to kindly have an attention to this slide. This slide is not about history of supply chain management. My purpose of developing this slide is not that. The purpose of sharing this slide with all of you is to show a very important thing related to supply chain management. If you observe the entire diagram and the schematics in this uh, slide, you'll observe one thing which is slowly but steadily taking place. And you will also observe that from the diagram, the history is paving the path for the future. The history is showing the path for the future of supply chain management. So what is it? What is it that is coming out from the diagram? You will see that the entire elements, the entire structure, the framework, and the various components of supply chain management 
over a period of time are now converging and getting focused on a central or a you uh, once unitary concept so today what you are seeing is not supply chain management it is iscm or integrated supply chain management to be very precise supply chain management was something that we left maybe 5 years ago in the era that we live today is an era of integrated supply chain management if we leave any of the element of the integrated supply chain management we will ne never be able to make out a perfect well coordinated decision also from the slide you will see the graduation of the concept that we started with and how uh, how actually did we graduate from a particular concept to this integrated concept when we started supply chain in itself is a relatively new subject but if you will observe it started with logistics logistics initially used to be the core of supply chain management system produce a thing send it to the customer that's it your supply chain was over this was the story up to late 90s in developing country there was a story up to late 80s if you are good at your logistics your supply chain is good this was the understanding why because in those times the supply chain was understood to be logistics only the impact of why do we want to have supply chain management system in this case we want to understand and discuss as to why supply chain management system is necessary before starting on let me pose a simple scenario to you on your screen you can see that a particular there is a particular company this data has is a real data and it has been taken from a steel manufacturing company this company observes the freight transportation inventory expenses administrative expenses and logistic related activities it is focused and is measuring all these elements do you see a problem here is it doing good or do you think there is an inherent problem in this entire way it is measuring the things if you think you will get a correct answer well the problem here is that the measurement that we are doing is totally wrong the focus that we are aimed at the focus area is totally wrong things like freight transportation inventory administrative process etc are no longer big ticket items of supply chain management system as i said or maybe even 10 to 15% of it only things like information flow things like demand forecasting things like the capacity planning etc which are the elements of supply chain management have not been taken care of at all. so there is an inherent problem in this thing if we are doing a measurement like this our measurement is wrong and as we understand in management circles a product is as good as its measure if you your measurement is correct your product and the process is very good if the measurement that you are following is bad your product is destined to fail let me take you through an another example another again a uh, steel manufacturing company example these are the results that uh, i am sharing for a steel manufacturing company after a year the expenses are about 96% of which logistics cost is 21% and the manufacturing cost is about 48% and the company is getting about 4% of profit so again what do you think is the problem here is there a problem at all 
if you think again this is a very very simple solution which is inherent in the problem itself if you see the uh, process you will see that logistics is occupying or contributing to 21% of the total costs can you imagine a company which say is handling about 1000 to million dollars it's it, it is its net, uh, net turnover and it is exp expending about 21% uh, of it on logistics itself is this company feasible is it distant to run this company is not distant to run this company is distant to fail 21% contribution to expense is not at all acceptable and hence the supply chain of this company is a very average kind of a supply chain the process will run the supply chain will run but it will run only for maybe four to five years after that a complete lockout the company will stop operating so what do we do here simple cut down on the logistics cost now at this point let's take an example of how a company which faced a similar kind of a situation increased its profit from 4% to 44% seems impossible but is possible how could it do that i am talking about the world's biggest company which is walmart Walmart when started had a very thin profit margin something like this the case which I am I have shared on your screen but today the profit of Walmart is an example for other what did Walmart do differently Walmart attacked on reduction of its logistics cost how did it do it it was very very simple again a very simple solution to a very complicated supply chain solution what did Walmart do Walmart started opening up its stores in localities which were nearer to its distribution centers or procurement centers when it started doing that just think what was the change that was brought about by this simple step its logistics cost came down drastically its waiting time came down drastically its dependence on one particular resource came down drastically the product variety increased the total customer engagement increased you could see that how Walmart successfully implemented a successful supply chain management system and became the largest company in the world few important examples like a typical steel industry it earns about 50 crores just by effect logistics I'll take an example of a steel major like POSCO POSCO is a big big steel manufacturing giant but have you ever wondered how does it make its profit POSCO makes its profit by a simple strategy and what is that most of the POSCO plants are based on seashores so the logistics cost <coughs> is totally marginalized simple and innovative supply chain solution a legendary example of supply chain management system is Dell Dell which did not have any infrastructure for business when it started is one of the most renowned company in terms of laptop or other computing hardware. how is that that is just because then try to understand what was the gap in the existing supply chain being practiced by the other hardware developing companies or the hardware suppliers and we try to exploit on that what did they do they directly started 
procuring the material from the customers assembled the uh, the assembly took place at the uh, assembly point itself it was directly sent to the customers no distributor no retailers no warehouse nothing and it is a very simple and a, yet a common fact that the more resources that you churn out from the supply chain the bigger will be your margin so when dell started up uh, started doing this what they did, uh, did was it procured the various uh, co components of a laptop or a computer system assembled them at its assembling unit or the uh, manufacturing company and sent sent it directly to the customer the big benefit was apart from the financial gain the customer waiting time was reduced it was reduced from an average 21 days to 21 hours within a day the product was delivered moving on today when you see the supply chain model of dell it is not totally b2c directly business to customer it has also started opening a few of its stores why is that it is because the customer volume is so it has increased and that is why to have an experience of its product then has started opening a new stores so just by a small modification in its supply chain and maturing from one supply chain to the other the total impact on the business is big as we have already discussed the components of a supply chain system if you see are the manufacturers the suppliers the retailers distributors and the logistics system these are the components and if you go into the entire process of it as to what are the things which impact the supply chain system you will see that sourcing warehousing it system finances logistics procurement purchasing distribution systems supply etc all of these are important aspects of supply chain management system if any of these elements or structures are hampered believe your supply chain will never flourish it is going to just remember the five important ingredients of a supply chain the suppliers manufacturers warehouses stores and the customers focus all your attention on all these five resources only when you focus on them the micro management of all these resources will automatically take place and the macro improvement in supply chain will definitely take place. let's see an example of what are benefiting from it this is an example that i have taken from a leading e-commerce company of india and it's not flipkart this is an example that i have taken from snapdeal snapdeal if you see started with the unitary supply method which was what it meant that from the customers the vendors when the order was placed from a customer it was a sub, snapdeal acted as a basic information system or the virtual marketplace it processed the system it passed on the information to the customer uh, i beg your pardon to the supplier the supplier bought the product received the product from its warehouse and sent it to the customer all these things took uh, took place through the platform of snapdeal snapdeal only provided the platform but this was a unitary flow customer supplier then again customer but just imagine if there are multiple suppliers to a huge array of customer population what will happen unitary flow of information is not possible any of the suppliers can supply to any of the customers any of the customer can buy from any of the suppliers so all of these give way to a complicated or a multi layered multi functional multi information flow supply chain management system if you see on this entire diagram snapdeal 
is more at the physical process. Where is the snap deal? Snap deal is on the yellow bar that you see in this diagram, flow of information. This is the only role of snap deal. Let's see by simple analysis of a supply chain and its uh, fitment into that supply chain. So Snaptail has developed a new, entirely new model for supply chain management system in India. The beneficiaries, if you see, as I said, supply chain management system, police uh, management system, none of the companies can stay away from it. These are the gambit of products. So this is how supply chain management system is. And this is how the basic companies or the important company, top companies of today, exploit the supply chain management system. You, my friends, are a professional. As a professional, it is your responsibility to impact the process in an optimal way so that the end or the outcome is very, very positive. In order to do so, you will have to have a very, very good and in-depth understanding of supply chain management system. You are part of a supply chain management system and you have to impact that supply chain management system. And when you start impacting your supply chain management system of which you are part of, you are bound to move up the corporate ladder and to grow in the professional circles. Just try to understand what are the interdependencies in a process. Just try to understand how are you going to impact the supply chain system. Observe a process. Observe the supply chain of which you are a process of part of. Try to find out the gaps. Is the logistical system that you are using good? Is it economical? Is it uh, one unidimensional? Is it uh, is your company more dependent on it? How is the information flow? How are the people behaving in your supply chain management system? Just as a outsider, try to see your entire supply chain. My suggestion is try to discuss with as many people as you can in the supply chain to try to find out what exactly is the problem in the supply chain. When you have understood the process and the problem, then you are in a better position to resolve the problems. When we will take up this course on supply chain management system, we will take up the various aspects of supply chain management system, how we should view a supply chain management system, what are the supply chain management tools, how do we design a supply chain management system, what are the advantage or disadvantage of these systems, designs, calculations, etc.? How do we actually optimize supply chain management system? So this is how the entire course will go about. This course is basically on a platform of a virtual learning media, which is Edureka. So just uh, maybe two to three minutes about Edureka. If you go into the details of virtual learning, you'll see that this type of a learning on a platform like Edureka provides you with various important gains apart from the knowledge. What are they? They are that you have a benefit that uh, any of the lectures or any of the course that you have taken up is taught on a real-time basis. If it is not a pre-recorded lecture, it is a lecture where you interact with the instructor and the instructor interacts with you. Question and answers are there. Your doubts are resolved. It is as if a professor is teaching you individually in a class. That's one. Secondly, most of us are professionals. We don't have a time for a regular course because regular course is a bit demanding one time. So when you come on a virtual platform like Edureka, it gives you a flexibility to learn at your own comfortable time. Suppose you miss out on a lecture. That is not the end of it all. When you miss out on a lecture, you will get an opportunity to 
go visit the lecture on the education platform which is the learning management system which we have at Edureka. When you enroll for a course, you are made a part of the entire Edureka learning system. You are a part of the ecosystem. As a result of which, you are your home page is made and on that particular home page, all the relevant documents including the course content, the recording of the classes, the quiz questions, the assignment questions, the project questions, professor's feedback, professor's interaction with you, all the important knowledge documents are there on your home page. You can access it for your entire lifetime, at any moment of time, for any number of time. Secondly, since this is a course which is taught by instructors who are very experienced in their own field and who are also ex instructors in leading B schools of India. So you are actually getting a very good quality education at your own comfort as a great boost to all the professionals who want to learn a concept from a world renowned uh, instructor or a faculty on a world renowned information system or a education platform, this gives you an opportunity for that. Some of the aspects like live online classes, class recordings, 24-7 support, quiz, project work, certificates that you get, the world class certificates which are widely accepted by everybody in the world. It is appreciated, acknowledged by all the leading companies and educational institutions. At this note, I like to commence on this webinar and I am opening up this session for question and answers. Yeah, participants, you can ask your questions. Participants, Hello. you can, uh, yeah. Who's that? Oh. Yeah, please carry on. You can ask your question, please. Hello. Uh, hello, can you, uh, can you hear me? Participants, can you listen to me? Hello. Yeah, participants, can you listen to me? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, please ask you. Yeah, please ask your question. Hello, Prashant sir. So this is Gaurav Devarma. Yeah, Gaurav. Uh, and I'm studying FTR MBA, Operations Management, which is Business Management. Group. Gaurav, can you repeat? Can you please repeat your question and uh, can you be a bit louder, please? Yes, sir. Sir, so this is Gaurav Devarma. Operations management management right sir uh, i just want to know about uh, the fundamentals of reverse logistics and sir uh, recently i have also gone through one article uh, mm -hmm. a, a recall has been a, taken for Volkswagen and Honda cars and basically for the problems in steering wheel and uh, this airbag so sir, can right. you uh, throw some light uh, regarding the recall uh, thing, like uh, a, how is the supply chain management a, so efficient during the recall stuff and uh, though it is uh, like uh, sufficient enough for uh, the logistics, how does the reverse logistics do act upon the supply chain management on the same platform? Okay. First of all, thank you for your question, Gaurav. It was really a great question and uh, le uh, let me try to rephrase your question. You are asking about the reverse supply chain management process and uh, you are trying to, uh, trying to understand as to uh, how Volkswagen implemented it. 
Honda. Yeah. Basically, uh, reverse supply chain management system is nothing but uh, the process understanding from the customer point of view to the supplier. You see in the slides that we have seen, you will see that the flow of material takes place from the raw material to the customer. But in case of a uh, reverse supply chain management system, the entire material flow flows into a reverse direction. Now this is not a supply chain, this is not a supply chain development model. This is not the purpose of it. This is no, uh, uh, not the basic thing for which a supply chain system is developed. So how do we cater to that? Let us take the example of Volkswagen again. It had to recall uh -huh. about thousands of its cars. So how did it do that? If you see, the Volkswagen, when it uh, started uh, having problems with its uh, uh, fuel ignition system, uh, the problem was related to false reading of its fuel ignition system. Yeah. And that's why it has to recall it. What did it do? It uh, in, informed all the customers that kindly hand over all your cars to the nearest retailer or the distributors. When these distributors were handed over the cars by the customers, the distributors were paid logistic cost by Volkswagen to deliver the faulty cars at their warehouses. When the cars were delivered at the warehouses, from that particular area, the engineers of Volkswagen came in and tried to address the faulty area, which was the fuel measurement system. The engineers of Volkswagen attended to the problem at the warehouse itself and then they again, after the rectification, sent back the cars to the end customers. So when you are designing or uh, witnessing a reverse supply chain management system, you will have to take a call as to where exactly are you going to handle and manage the volume of the product which you are going to recall. Obviously, you are going to take it at an area where you will have a better inventory control. Volkswagen had its inventory control at its national warehouses. In India, it was at Pune. Damage control goes up a gear at the world's biggest car maker. Volkswagen's plans to recall. Right. Have I uh, have I answered your question, Gaurav? Yes, yes, sir. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you. You're always welcome. Next question, please. Hello, Prasad. Yeah. Hello. Who is that? Who is that? Kali. Uh, this is Rajesh. Yeah, Rajesh. Ask me the question, Rajesh. Hello. Yeah. You you are audible to me, Rajesh. Tell me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am I am audible. Is that yeah, Please ask me your question, Rajesh. Hello. Yeah, Rajesh. Uh, you are audible. Actually, I like to know about the uh, barn houses, uh, which was followed by a uh, snap deal. Uh, come again, please. What was that? Rajesh, can you please come again? Can you please repeat your question? Yes. 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 Actually, you said about Snapdeal. Yeah, I was speaking about Snapdeal. What is your question about that? Yeah, hello, Prasad. Yeah, Rajesh, please repeat your question. Yeah, actually, you have set up the link that in between Rajesh, can you please write down your question? I can see it. Actually, your voice yeah. is cracking. Can you please write down your question? 
क्या राजेश कैन यू प्लीज राउट राइट डाउन द क्वेश्चन so uh, rajesh what i can interpret from your question is that you are asking about the snap deal and their flow plan is it yes 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 actually i am i am asking about that one. actually how they okay. recover from their failures the how much of that uh, warehouse played how important okay. that warehouse they played okay if you see snap deal has not yet come out from its failure Snapdeal is still struggling, and why is it struggling? It is struggling because Snapdeal is not at all focused on its important goal, which is the customer. So, if you reflect on the supply chain model of Snapdeal, as I have already discussed, you'll see that Snapdeal only provides a platform for the supplier to sell their products and the customer. to get the products it is just an information processing platform for that it does not concern itself with the quality of product that is being sent by the supplier if a product is sent at all by the customer or not to the uh, by the supplier to the customer or not it is only a transaction channel as of now so when it started getting la large number of customer complaints because the suppliers were pro- uh, sending bad or no products at all to the customers so it had no other option but to look at its supply chain model so now when you see snap deal is now trying to develop its own warehouse and it is also uh, now working on developing few of its own customized products like mobile if you see Uh, for flipkart flipkart has already come into this uh, market of uh, something like a digi flip which is a mobile apparatus from flipkart snapdeal is also trying to base its entire supply chain model on a process something like that have i answered your question rajesh yes 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 sure sir nice nice answer i got that and thanks a lot for the yeah. yeah look forward to meeting you in the course yeah sure sir yeah hemant has asked me a very good question hemant asked me how can six sigma be used in supply chain management system hemant to answer your question in brief supply chain management system is an interlinking and a optimization of a process whenever you are trying to optimize a process six sigma is bound to come in because it is a process improvement initiative in a supply chain management system you will see that uh, there are there can be many leakages the leakages could be the material handling the leakages could be information flow the leakages could be in the financial transactions the net expenses that we discussed so the six sigma process will enable you to plug in all the leakages for example i'll take an example of flipkart again when you see flipkart it started getting complaints on the mobile sets that it was selling flipkart did not have any control on those mobiles because what it used to do was it was getting it from the suppliers or procuring it from its regional warehouse and sell it sending it to the customers but when the large number of customer complaints started coming in for the faulty mobiles flipkart came up with a unique innovative six sigma solution what was that it procured mobiles from the suppliers for itself rebranded them as digi flip and started marketing it to the customer in the entire process it ensured that the quality of the product was not compromised it bred the quality of flipkart so this is how by a simple application of six sigma the supply chain of a e-commerce giant was impacted positively anyone with questions hello 
Yeah. Yes, please. Hello, who's that? Kindly ask your question. Participant, kindly ask your question. What is your question? Hello. Yeah. Yeah, hi Prashant. Hello. Yeah, hi Prashant. Yeah. Is Jay over here? Hi Jay. Yeah, actually, uh, presently I'm associated with an IIT Bombay startup company and it's right. basically into logistics services. Yeah. Right. And the company's name is SEN, S-E-N-D-D. So, S-E-N-D-D. Okay. Yeah, All the best for your company. Oh, thank you so much. So, yeah. does the analysis part comes into picture when we are dealing in logistics? Analysis as in what? What the analysis are you trying to focus on? Like Is it related yeah. to logistics itself? Yeah. Okay. When you are trying to design a supply chain logistics system, hmm. the analysis part will come beforehand. When you are designing a supply chain logistics system, you need to understand what are the challenges that you may come across, what are the forecasts, what are the streams through which you are going to deliver a product and based on that you will be able to design your own supply chain management logistical solution. For example, if I take an example of your delivery mechanism from uh, Mumbai to Raipur. So if you don't analysis, analyze and understand that uh, Raipur is a potentially uh, disturbed area. So based on the, uh, that analysis and feedback as to what could be the effective mode of transportation in that area, you will never be able to design an optimal solution to that route. For example, from uh, Mumbai to Raipur, if your logistics cost from uh, say a lorry is uh, higher than th that from a loco or a wagon but mm. if it gets, gives you an assurance that the material will be delivered in time and your re reliable replenishment time will be will not be compromised then uh, the uh, design of the supply chain will be based on your choice of the transport therefore analysis in your logistical system must always be done before the true design of the system. However, this is not sacrosanct. As I said, supply chain management system is not a system that you have designed and then forget it. It is not like that. Had Flipkart stuck only to its initial supply chain management system, it would have locked its door by now. But it keep, kept on evolving. It kept on thinking about new measures. It kept on thinking about what are the challenges to the various resources that are inherent in its supply chain management system. And then it kind of evolved its in entire system. So there is no solution which is the uh, ultimate solution. You will always need to analyze and monitor the way your business is going in, the way your supply chain is delivering. Based on the delivery of your supply chain, you need to modify your analysis. Have I answered your question? Yeah, definitely. That was helpful for me. Vanilla has asked me a question. Wants to know, can I know the disadvantages of supply chain management system? There are no disadvantages of supply chain management system. The supply chain management system can only act or prove disadvantages to you if you don't apply the supply chain management system in its true spirit and manner. If you apply the supply chain management system as per the basic tenets of its principles, there are no disadvantages. There are only advantages and further advantages. I'll cite you an example. As I already told you about a company by the name of Borders. It was the largest book selling company in UK. The company had to close its door due to advent of other online players. Why was that? Was it because of the supply chain? No. It was because the company could not adjust and adapt itself 
to the changing need of the supply chain. The business was changing and it was changing from a physical business to an online business. Borders could not adjust its supply chain to this new mode of supply chain methodology. As a result of which, it failed miserably and its doors are locked now. So, just to answer your question again, there are no disadvantages of supply chain, but there are only disadvantages of supply chain application in partiality or without any thinking. Bindu has asked me a very good question. Thanks, Bindu, for the question. Ask me, how about supply chain with customer-generated simplification of a channel? Bindu, I must say that this is a wonderful uh, suggestion from you. But then you will see that a concept similar to this is already in practice. How do we know that concept? This concept is known as a concept by the name of VMI. What is VMI? VMI is Vendor Managed Inventory. As simple as that. In any supply chain, the more you engage your customer, the better will be the success of your supply chain. The more you interact the needs of your customer, the more you take feedbacks from your customer and take his help from the product development, new product generation, etc. The more you try to keep your inherent or, uh, or your own logistics or an inventory at your side from your end to the customer end, all your liabilities are shifted from yourself to the customer who again will not change this liability into an asset. So this is a wonderful suggestion from Bindu and in all supply chain management systems, the customers you will always see is an integral part. The customer is a part of the visualization, development, design, institutionalization of the supply chain network system. Take the case of Walmart. Take the case of Snapdeal. Take the case of Dell. They keep on taking feedback from the customers. They keep on pushing their inventories to the maximum limit possible to the nearer area of the customer. The nearer the inventory is to the customer, the robust is the supply chain management system. Thank you, Bindu. Helal Zukrari asked me a question. Can I have the recording of this session? Yes, Helal, you can have the recording of this session. Kindly contact the office at Edureka and they will hand over the recording session to you. In case you have issues related to the uh, learnings in this webinar, feel free to contact me and I'll get in touch with you on any of the issues related to supply chain management system. Hello? Hello, please ask your question. Hi, thank you for your answer about my question. But can, can, can you... Can what you was your back? question? Can you please... Uh, uh, the recording of the yeah, session, what is because there is a lot of interruption in the session, so I didn't understand it very well. So can you confirm in, uh, there is a link or somebody to contact for, for downloading the session? Uh, and of, uh, of a colleague from uh, Edureka will contact you immediately and mm -hmm. get in touch with you regarding the issue that you are facing and mm -hmm. they will try to resolve it. If the issue is related to problems or questions uh, of the learnings of the webinar today, mm -hmm. they will contact me and I will give you a feedback on your email. Yes, I'll thank give you, you solutions. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, no problem. It was ju uh, just interruption in the line of internet. That's oh, it. No, prob no problems, there will be a next webinar session. Uh, just keep following Edureka and uh, try to attend to that webinar session. I'm sure you will end up learning something more about supply chain management system. Great, great. great. Which date it will be scheduled uh, the next session? Mm, presently, I'm not able to tell you right now. You will have to get in touch with the Edureka team. 
uh, rather mm -hmm. the Eureka team will get in touch with you. They will brief you about the methodology. They will also brief you about the next webinar session. And mm -hmm. then if you are interested and if you uh, have time, kindly attend to that webinar session. And we'll, then we can have a interaction again. Thank you. Thank you. Another question, please. Uh, if we're going to start to plan for supply chain or to uh, use our brand as a supply chain to make it uh, in the system of supply chain, what is the mainly procedure to do to do it for, for like planning or for first procedure to do for, for uh, change the, the brand to supply chain system? Uh, you want to change your uh, brand to a supply no, I chain? Wa I, want, I want to... Uh, Put our cha our uh, name or our company in the supply chain system. So, if there is any recommended plan or or procedures for this system. Okay. Thank you for your question. Your question was really a good question. And uh, actually, believe me or not, this is a problem of supply chain that most of the top companies are also facing today. How to develop their brand? Uh, amongst the customers, how to propagate their brand, mm -hmm. how to develop a supply chain for that. If you see, there is a company by the name of uh, Tata Steel. This company is in India and it is a steel manufacturer. It, it has various uh, brands under its belt. It produces steel and uh, markets the product as brands. Now, how Tata Steel was able to market and brand its product through this supply chain? I'll take you through that. First of all, it developed the product. When few of the products were available, then it went to the end customer. Mm -hmm. It interacted with the end customer and tried to find out what were their needs. Because I understand you will also appreciate that a branded product will always call for a higher premium than an average or a normal product. So why will a customer give you a premium for a product that is readily available in the market? He is go going to give you a premium only because he is convinced about your quality. Mm -hmm. So when you are designing your supply chain, you will have to play around quality only. Second thing. When you are designing the supply chain, you will have to play around the replenishment time. That is the time from which the product will be manufactured to the time to which it is delivered to the customer. It mm -hmm. should be lower than or at max equal to the average time taken by an average product to be delivered to the customer. Mm -hmm. Other area of supply chain like uh, after sales, after sales services, etc., are also aspects which you can include in your supply chain so that the customer is forced to buy your product. Coming to the designing of the supply chain, how do we design the supply chain? In order to design the supply chain, first of all, you will have to develop a warehouse wherein you will keep the products in the made to order status. Now, what is MTO or the made to order? You will have products and as soon as the customer gives you an order, you will immediately provide the orders because the uh, product is already made and you are anticipating and expecting this product demand from the customer and that is why you made it beforehand itself. This is MTO methodology. So when the customer is getting the product in the least amount of time or the time in which he had not at all expected it to be received, he will definitely be ready to give you that extra premium. Mm -hmm. This is how you play on the designing of the supply chain from the time aspect point of view. Second, as I said, was the quality aspect point of view. How do you ensure quality in a supply chain management system? You will have to look at the various leakages in quality in a supply chain management system. For example, if I take the company uh, example of this company, this company produces iron coils. Now these iron coils can either be left in open or they can be uh, well covered up and uh, 
be pro uh, protected from all the rusting and other things. These are the two things that can be uh, done with the coils. Now, when you are branding a product, brand it in such a way that uh, you are selling a product which is totally re uh, resistant free, which is totally rust free, which is good on quality and uh, you are keeping it in a warehouse, you are storing it in a such a way that it is uh, it does not come in physical contact with the environment and then you send it to the customer. So these are few of the triggers in the supply chain and modifications in your uh, general supply chain through which you can promote your brand and you can develop an entirely new supply chain model. Mm -hmm. Have I answered your question correctly? Yes, thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, the last question, please. Uh, yeah. uh, what is the plan for the quality control related to the supply chain? If I'm if I, if I gonna, gonna do the quality control on the plan, so is it related to the supply chain directly or, or no. it's a separate, a separate system for, for, uh, for the supply or, or about on the supply chain? Theoretically speaking, the two are different. Practically speaking, the two are inseparable. Mm -hmm. This is a simple answer that I can give you. When uh, you, as a when you as a professional, is dealing with a product, and mm -hmm. you are trying to improve your supply chain efficiency, then mm -hmm. you cannot distinguish between your quality control plan and the supply chain management system. Mm -hmm. They are inseparable. But practically, theoretically speaking. This is a different concept, and supply chain management system is a different concept. Mm -hmm. Now, in the practical world, suppose you have a supply chain management system, but at the same time, your quality is very, very poor. What will be the efficiency of that supply chain? It will be very, very poor because the customer will decline to get your product because its quality is very, very poor. So, you will have no other option but to integrate your quality plan to the supply chain distribution network. You will have to ensure quality at all the resources, all the nodes of the supply chain, starting from the supplier, to the processor, to the warehouse, to the stores, and to the customer, including the logistics. When you are getting it from the supplier, you will have to ensure that the quality control for the raw material is there. You are not getting poor quality raw materials. When you are processing it, then the quality control for the process should be there so that the number of defects is absolutely zero. Coming to the warehouses, as I said, you will have to ensure that the quality of the output that you have kept in the warehouse is not at all compromised by the environment. And when it is uh, transferred through logistics, it is the quality is not compromised. So quality and supply chain is inseparable and quality plan is a part of supply chain management system. In the course, I have a separate subject and a module which I have devised for understanding and learning of the quality plan and the supply chain ma management system. How quality impacts the supply chain management system and how without quality your supply chain management system is destined to go haywire. Mm -hmm. There is a separate module for it in this course. Yes, great, great. Thank you for your answer. Thank you a lot. I appreciate your time for answering and for this great session. I really appreciate your, uh, appreciate your attendance and attention also to the webinar and uh, thank you for asking these pertinent and very relevant questions. You are most welcome. Thank you. Anybody else who wants to uh, ask a question? Bindu has again asked me a question. Is vertical integration and horizontal integration same for supply chain management as it is in the marketing? Bindu, this is the question that you yourself can answer. All of it will depend on the kind of supply chain that you are following. If the supply chain and the flow of information is requires a vertical integration, top to bottom, kindly do that. If it is a horizontal flow, kindly go with the horizontal flow or maybe both. So this is just a choice. You can always do either the vertical one or the horizontal one. I didn't get you. What do you mean by Omni? Bindu has asked me a question about Omni marketing strategy. Omni, as I understand, is a car brand from Maruti. Is this what you are trying to come at? Kindly let me know what 
do you mean by omni strat marketing strategy okay omni marketing strategy is commonly known in the supply chain management parlance or jargon as mto make to order you make products based on and presumption or a forecast from a customer that a customer since he has a historical precedence of getting some products of same similar nature in the historical months and years so you will start making those products in anticipation without the customer ordering you and as soon as the customer orders those products to you you will immediately send those products to the customers this is the strategy similar to omni marketing strategy which we follow in supply chain management system it is called as an mto bindu have i answered your question correctly have i understood your question correctly jay do you want to ask a question kindly ask your question again jay do you have a question kindly ask your question this will be the last question for the session and then we will wrap it up who is going to ask me the last question for the day okay the last question of the day comes from jay who wants to know the highest designation a supply chain guy of a company can acquire in future jay tell me the answer to this uh, to your question lies in your own question itself you you ask yourself the answer to your question a supply chain guy can become the md the chairman or the highest decision making authority of a company you will see that no uh, official or no top boss of any good company is somebody who has an isolated knowledge of a particular system itself any person who has a versatile knowledge of the process end to end is only going to raise to the top position so you being a supply chain guy you trying to understand the course and its concept are well equipped to raise to the highest level possible but then it will require lots and lots of hard work lots and lots of personal engagement to the professional cause and lots and lots of understanding of the real problems of your supply chain if you do that j then you are bound to rise to the top in your company there is nobody who can stop you from there i can guarantee you that sandeep has asked me this will be the last question of the webinar and then we will wrap it up this question comes from sandeep who asked me how a developer can progress in supply chain management this is a question which is similar to the last question that i answered sandeep don't think when i started with this uh, webinar i laid very great focus on where you want to be after 5 years when you uh, are a developer now so are you going to continue in this same domain even if you are a developer you are a part of a supply chain so it all depends on your own impact on the supply chain if you are able to impact your supply chain that you are part of you are going to rise in the organization but if you are content with the kind of job that you are doing the technical job and other things then you will be limited in that particular domain itself you need to understand the entire process the entire supply chain methodology and the entire resources in detail of the supply chain of which you are uh, part of when you have understood that then only you can impact you the process and then you can move on from developer to senior developer then the project leader then the project team manager so on and so forth general managers vp and so on and so forth but if you will see all these uh, people started from an domain expert 
impacted the supply chain, rose up, again impacted the supply chain, rose up, again impacted the supply chain of which they were part of, rose up and hence on. Finally, they rose to a position wherein they started impacting the entire supply chain of the company or the organization. So Sandeep, if you are thinking in a correct way, in a, if you are thinking in a correct manner, if you are understanding the gaps in your supply chain and you are trying to improve your supply chain, then nobody can stop you from progressing to the position of apex in your organization. As I was concluding, I have got a last second question from Bindu. Bindu, can you please uh, ask your question again? I didn't get your question. Can you please type or ask your question again? Bindu has asked me what are the aspects to be considered about enhancing the supply chain management system. So Bindu, just think. What are the things that could be the aspects? First of all, you need to understand what is your uh, firepower or what is your total potency of the supply chain management system. What are the re resources that you have been provided with and what are the resources that you need to work, work with? You have to have a good assessment of that. What are the interdependencies in the supply chain? You need to have an information of that. What is the requirement of the customer? You have to have a good understanding of that. What are the information management systems you are given with will be your top priority? What is the thing that you are supposed to process? And how are you supposed to process? What is the efficiency of the process? Will be your priority. Will be the aspects that you should look on. What is the reliable replenishment time? How is the supplier giving you the product? What is the due date? What is the time over which the supplier is giving you product? And all that. So these are some of the aspects. But then there is a laundry list of aspects which we will be discussing in detail when we take up this course. This is an eight module course covered in 16 hours. And it is a very exhaustive course and a demanding course. But then, when you end up this course, I'm sure, Bindu, you will be a very good supply chain professional. Have I answered your question correctly, Bindu? OK, so now that we have had a long session of question and answers, which I initially intended to have of only 15 minutes, got extended by 1 hour 15 minutes, I am uh, signing off from this session and uh, hope this was an good learning experience for all of you and uh, I sincerely expect and hope to see you all in the webinar in the course so I will bid adieu and will close the webinar now in case if you still have problems kindly get in touch with edureka.com and they will uh, route it to you and uh, route it route the questions to me and I will give you personalized feedbacks Thanks for your time and have a great weekend.